Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss the basic mechanism and what we might observe in someone with spinal muscular atrophy. Now, in spinal muscular atrophy, we have progressive death of what we call alpha motor neurons. We'll look at the mechanism of this in just a minute, but let's first understand what an alpha motor neuron is. So right here, this is a cross section of the spinal cord. Now ultimately, the decision for voluntary muscle contraction is gonna come from the brain, in particular the pre-motor areas and the motor cortex. And so that information travels down the spinal cord and it's gonna to have to activate this neuron right here. This is an alpha motor neuron. This alpha motor neuron right here is going to originate really in the anterior or ventral gray matter or ventral gray horn of the spinal cord. It's gonna exit the spinal cord through the ventral root. So this structure right here in yellow, up to about right here, this is the ventral root. Up here's the dorsal root, and then the dorsal root and the ventral root eventually are gonna fuse, and the point where they fuse is the actual spinal nerve. So you can see the alpha motor neuron exit the spinal cord through that ventral root, it's going to go into the spinal nerve, and of course it can either exit that through the ventral ramus or a dorsal ramus, depending on the muscle. But the whole point here is that this motor neuron eventually goes out to the periphery and it innervates some skeletal muscle. Okay, So again, whenever you need this muscle to contract, of course, voluntarily you need input from the central nervous system, from the premotor area and the motor cortex. That activates this motor neuron called an alpha motor neuron, and then when that alpha motor neuron becomes activated, then the skeletal muscle contracts. So what might happen if this alpha motor neuron dies? Well, then this muscle is not gonna be able to contract since the alpha motor neuron is directly responsible for that muscle contraction. So what might cause an alpha motor neuron to die? Well, to understand this, we need to understand that actually these motor neurons or alpha motor neurons actually need permission to even live in the first place. Let's talk about how that works. So here's the cell's nucleus, and of course here's the DNA contained in the nucleus. Well, that DNA has a gene called SMN. So the SMN gene is contained in the DNA in the nucleus. So of course it's transcribed into mRNA. This would be the mRNA encoding the SMN gene. That mRNA is then translated into a protein. This protein is the SMN protein. And really what it is is it's an alpha motor neuron survival factor or survival protein. And so it basically just permits the survival of these alpha motor neurons. Okay, and you can see them here innervating the skeletal muscle. Now, specifically in spinal muscular atrophy, the SMN gene within the DNA is deleted. So individuals with spinal muscular atrophy don't have this gene. So what does that look like? Well, if they don't have the gene for SMN, they're not gonna be able to produce the mRNA, right? No transcription of that gene. Therefore, they're not gonna get translation to get the SMN protein, so no SMN protein. And so they are not able to promote alpha motor neuron survival. So without this protein, you're gonna end up with progressive alpha motor neuron death. Now, what I'm trying to show here is that it's not an all or none phenomenon, okay? It's not like all of a sudden, in an instant, all the alpha motor neurons die. Um, it progresses over time, and in certain types of this disease, it goes faster than others. Uh, but you might start with neurons like this, but over time, they're going to dwindle in size and in number, and eventually they'll all be dead in a certain area, okay? Now, what you also see here is the skeletal muscle is smaller. Now, why is that? Well, if a skeletal muscle is not innervated, or it's become less innervated by these alpha motor neurons, um, it's not getting the signal that it needs to contract or it needs to even stay in its current size, and so it atrophies. Okay, so in individuals with spinal muscular atrophy, as the name suggests, their muscles atrophy because they're not receiving innervation from these alpha motor neurons. And again, it's not all or none, it doesn't happen in an instant, it happens over time. Okay, so hopefully that mechanism makes sense. So again, spinal muscular atrophy is one of our motor neuron diseases here, going along with post-polio syndrome and amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS. 
Now, what I want to be clear about is that these motor neuron diseases differ in one major way from a peripheral nerve disease or peripheral nerve condition. So a peripheral nerve contains both motor and sensory neurons. Okay, so for example, if you take the musculocutaneous nerve in the arm, um, it obviously has motor components which innervate the biceps, but it also has some sensory components. So generally, with a peripheral nerve condition, you're going to have sensory loss and motor loss. But for a motor neuron disease, it's only affecting the motor neurons within that nerve. And so you're not going to see sensory changes due to uh, the death of these motor neurons. Okay, so let's take a look specifically now at spinal muscular atrophy. How are we going to observe uh, the loss of strength and the loss of muscle tone? Well, for spinal muscular atrophy, this is going to proceed in a proximal to distal pattern. It's meaning the proximal musculature is going to atrophy and become weak before the distal musculature. So for example, um, your trunk musculature and shoulder girdle muscles, those are going to atrophy and weaken before the forearm muscles. Okay? And it's going to occur in a symmetrical pattern, meaning this is going to occur on both sides of the body, left and right, equally. Notice that these other ones over here, post-polio syndrome and ALS, are both asymmetrical. Spinal muscular atrophy is symmetrical. Um, you're going to see flaccidity and hypotonia in those muscles. Um, most likely, in the initial stages, they're going to be more hypotonic. So they'll have some tone, but it's going to be diminished. Eventually, they'll become flaccid. You might also have vulvar dysfunction. This implies that you're having issues with the motor parts of the cranial nerves. Again, the cranial nerves, but they also have alpha motor neurons. And so those neurons that innervate the muscles of the face, the eyes, the throat, and so forth, um, those are going to atrophy as well, and so that would be that bulbar dysfunction. If you're conducting a neurological exam, you're going to see lower motor neuron signs in spinal muscular atrophy. Again, hypotonia is one of those, uh, but you might also have diminished reflexes, so hyporeflexia, and so on and so forth. Okay? Uh, now, spinal muscular atrophy is hereditary. That's how it, the, the disease is acquired. Um, that means it's caused by some genetic anomaly, and that cause, as we said, is a deletion of the SMN gene. Remember, the SMN gene promotes that cell survival of the alpha motor neuron, and when we don't have that gene present, we don't have that protein that's made, and so those alpha motor neurons don't have the signal to keep them alive, and so they just progressively die. I will also mention that this gene is a 5Q gene. What does that mean? Well, when we look at a chromosome, here's a general structure of one when it's actually wound up. Um, here's the centromere in the center, and of course they have arms. Okay? And one of the arms is shorter, one of them is longer. The short arm is the P arm, and the long arm is the Q arm. So by being a 5Q deletion, um, that means that the gene that's deleted is on the long arm of the chromosome, and it's on the fifth chromosome, so chromosome number 5. Okay? I just thought I would uh, go into that just a little bit. But the SMN gene is on the long arm of the fifth chromosome in humans. Okay? Um, now, in terms of that hereditary acquisition, there are four types of spinal muscular atrophy. We're going to go into these in more detail in a separate video, but those are types 1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, type 1 is the worst prognosis, and type 4 is the best, although not that you'd want this at all. But the type really depends on when the onset is. Type 1 is the infantile version, and it's the most severe. Type 4 doesn't usually manifest until the person's in their 30s. Um, and so because they've already had time for uh, muscles to grow and so forth, this is the best prognosis. Again, as you go from 1 to 4, um, you're getting later and later in life whenever the onset of this disease is. Okay? Um, again, the tissue in question here is that alpha motor neuron, and when, the, when they die, um, those muscles are no longer innervated, and so they become weak, and they waste, and they atrophy. Okay? Again, we mentioned it was a proximal to distal disease, so the muscles affected in general, you're going to start with the trunk and shoulder girdle muscles, and it's going to progress out distally. Um, same thing in the lower extremities, we might see the hip girdle muscles affected first, again progressing out distally to those lower extremities. Um, you'll see hypotonia, you'll see flaccidity, again those are things you might see in that neurological exam, those are those lower motor neuron signs. And again, with motor neuron diseases, you're not going to see any sensory changes, that is neurological sensory changes. Now, can the individual have pain? Yes. 
Um, that pain is specifically musculoskeletal pain. That is not neurological pain. So when we're talking about these sensory changes, no, the person is not going to have neurological pain because the neuron in question is not sensory. It's purely a motor neuron. Okay. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of spinal muscular atrophy and its mechanism. In the next video, we're going to be discussing post-polio syndrome and then ALS. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.